Hey everybody, it's Kyle here and welcome to a new video of Level Design Breakdown. Now, for this video, I won't actually be creating any new levels, so I'm just going to go through some basic theory about level design and I'll also do some housekeeping as well. So let's start with housekeeping. The first thing is you'll notice this character. If you notice the art style, if you recognize the art style, you'll already be able to tell that it's not mine. He is just, after all, for now, a placeholder, mainly because if I click play, and if I wait for a bit, <laughs> let's go away for it. Okay, there we go. Now we've got some gameplay. So I just want to get animations in, jumping and running, because mainly that those are the two actions that I'll be covering for this video. So again, this character is not mine. He is, uh, I forgot the name of the website, but there's a website where you can actually create uh, a custom, uh, what's it called, Maple Story character, and uh, comes with all the animations that you need. So really, that's the whole point of why he's there. Um, but at the same time, there's also the roughly the right, the uh, correct height that I want to get the character as well. So that's that's another reason why I chose to have this character as well. Same, similar height, different proportions, of course, but uh, overall, it's the same. However, this level kit, this is mine. I'll show you guys how to do this in another video if you actually need me to show you guys how to create a level kit. But uh, this level kit I've been using for ages. Um, just so happens that now that there's a 2D support here in Unity, I can actually use that, which is good. So, uh, now that all that's taken care of, let's uh, get onto the actual tutorial itself. I won't be doing too much uh, level building, um, mainly because there's just a few fundamentals about 2D, 2D games in general, and therefore 2D level design that I should note before we proceed. Uh, before that, though, we should take a look at uh, some things that you should know about sprites in Unity. Now, this is for 4.3. Now, make sure that you have your texture type set to Sprite. There's nothing else that you can set it to if you're making a sprite-based game. Sprite mode, of course, if it's more than one sprite on the sheet, make sure it's set to multiple. Packing tag, that's more of a, uh, a sort of grouping thing. So if you have, like, enemies, so we'll call this gray box player or something like that, right? Pixels to units, that means, oh, I should click apply. Pixels to units basically means uh, how many pixels, sorry, how many unity units is one pixel worth? So, <clears throat> excuse me. If I open up the low kit in the sprite editor and I click on this one, this is uh, my scale reference. I can see that that is 32 by 32. And I set the pivot point to bottom. It should be bottom left or bottom right. It shouldn't be in the middle. Like I don't prefer to put it in the middle. It should be bottom left. Apply that. Just so that it'll snap to the corners of the grids and not in between, if you know what I mean. Uh, that's the pivot point. Um, and if I can scroll in. I don't know if you can see this on your screen or if it's recording properly, but it, there's just a lighter shade of gray around here. And that's uh, one pixel. So it's 32 pixels. I've said... Uh, let's make uh, 32 pixels, 1 meter, right? That's why my pixels to units, 32. Most people leave it at 100, uh, but I have, um, that's just how I work. I just prefer to have everything sort of working properly. Maybe because it's a level designer's, level artist thing. Um, a lot of level artists sort of say, right, we're going to, whoa, we're going to create a texture that has 256. And we're going to make that 256 tile um, one meter or something like that. So it's a level artist thing. So I'm going to set that to zero. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to drag that up. There we go. I'll make that two. And that's already set to three. So um, if I have that there, right, and my scale at the moment is 32, which makes it one by one. So if you set it to 64 and your basic uh, block is uh, 64 pixels, then that'll scale accordingly. So if I set this to one, however, boom, one pixel, the cornermost pixel is gonna be one unity unit. So we don't want that. And of course, because it's part of a entire tile sheet, uh, that's what happens. <laughs> so you don't want that. So s make sure you find a proper scale reference double click on an object or click and press F and it'll zoom in. 
Okay, so actually getting into uh, actually building the level five minutes in already and uh, haven't really taught you anything. All right, so when you're uh, creating your level, there's a few things that you need to think about. So first of all is what kind of level are you building? So for this uh, video series, I'll be creating level one, which is generally the tutorial level, right? So uh, when you're building your tutorial level, I'm just gonna go off a uh, tutorial level because it's the easiest. Uh, the first thing that you should know about is what kind of game are you making? Is it going to be a fast paced game? Like, or relatively fast paced, uh, sort of like Mario. Super Mario, you have, within the first five seconds, you learn how to move, you learn how to jump. If you don't move and you don't jump, you're going to, you're going to get hit by the Goomba and then Mario's going to die. That's essentially how it works. Um, but maybe you have a story driven game like um, Metroid. I remember playing Metro on the Game Boy Advance a few years ago, um, actually many years ago now. Um, and I remember there's this one part of the level, like the tutorial bit where it would just be completely empty. And uh, you get introduced to the Metroids and you have to shoot the Metroids, right? So the first thing that you generally introduce to the player, no matter what kind of game you're making, is moving and jumping, which is what I have at the moment. So we look down at the screen down here, we can see that we have movement. So this block here is about 8 meters long. Actually, it is 8 meters long. And the first thing we're going to do within 8 meters uh, is move. And then we get to this wall here and we go, oh, okay, so we need to jump. Space. Now, depending on uh, who your target market is, of course, you want to change things around. Um, you want to make sure that you guide the players even though it's pretty obvious that space is key you still want to add in that sort of level of yes we do realize that this game is different uh, we want to make sure that you know the controls just in case maybe you don't have jumping in your game um that's okay as long as you teach them to move that's ge that's generally the uh, most important thing so within eight meters i taught the player how to move and jump likely um that's going to be the number one thing for uh, 2D platformers, jumping and moving. Um, maybe because it's called a 2D platformer. Um, and so you should teach them jumping and moving within at least the first five seconds. Uh, I would put a cap on five seconds. Uh, and then think about the other features later on. So again, going back to Super Mario. Uh, if you manage to get past the Goomba, if you don't miss the um, the block, the coin block, uh, you get a big mushroom, and that makes Mario um, bigger. It essentially gives him one extra health. And then after that, if you manage to survive a little longer, you get introduced to the Fire Flower, where if you press the other action button, I forgot what it what the button was now, but uh, if you press it, an action button, he'll actually shoot flames, right? instead of just sprinting really fast. So that's another thing as well. If, if there are two kinds of um, horizontal movement, i.e. if you can run, uh, can you also sprint? Things like that need to be taken into account. So um, when you're thinking about that, just uh, make sure that you teach them at a pace that you want to teach them at. So if it's meant to be a fast paced game, make sure everything is taught within the first five seconds. If it's a story driven game, you have a little bit more freedom. You can sort of teach them things a little bit more of a, on a gradual slope instead of just straight up and down. <laughs> um, so the learning curve is actually very important when it comes to designing levels, uh, especially tutorial levels. Uh, learning curve is very important. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna teach you guys today. I won't actually be creating any more levels, but another example that you can sort of show when it comes to jumping is Jumping part two, when you introduce things like enemies that you can stomp on, or in this case, a gap that you have to sort of jump across. Obviously, <laughs> in his current programming state, is some terrible programming um, that I just hacked together really quickly for this demo. I'm gonna fix it up later, but um, basically, if you miss the if you miss the landing, you'll likely fall through the gap, and when you fall through here, obviously you're gonna get punched for it by dying, right? <laughs> I mean that makes sense. Um, so, what do you want to teach? What else do you want to teach them? Jumping. Um, maybe you have 
certain platforms that are above the character and you want to teach them how to jump from from below the platform to the platform above that takes a little bit more programming but um it still works uh and what's another thing that you could teach them ah right um maybe you have a double jump system you want to teach them that as well so generally before you run into any enemies you want to get moving and jumping out of the way those are probably the two most important things for 2d platformers so i'm going to leave it there uh and while i'm away i hope you guys build some awesome levels um and don't forget to play test them as well um and just before i leave i should remind you all to like and subscribe and if you have any suggestions such as maybe you want me to go through some level kit building tutorial uh, i'll do that uh, but until then, uh, hope you have a fun time building levels. I'll see y'all later. Bye.